1-6. This section is on solving compound and absolute inequalities. 1-6 is actually the last section of chapter 1. So we'll learn this section today and the second part of this on Monday. So as part of your warm-up, you were to graph those inequalities. The idea was understanding whether it was an open or closed circle, understanding whether it was shaded to the right or the left. So greater than is shaded to the right, greater than or equal to is closed, less than left, and less than or equal to was left and closed. Okay, so we have a little bit of new vocabulary today. A compound inequality it is a pair of inequalities joined by and or or. So yesterday we focused primarily on a single inequality. Today we're going to follow up with that idea, but now we're going to have two inequalities at once, creating a compound inequality. And inequalities intersect, they overlap, they have areas in common. And inequalities intersect, they overlap, and they have areas in common. Or is the union, it's when you join two unshared quantities together so union is kind of another word for marriage. So when two people get married, their families join together, but hopefully when they get married, their families weren't related from the past. So they're joining two new families together. Is anybody still copying that down? It's okay if you are. I just didn't want to change the slide if I thought you were. All right, so what I want to do is look at a couple examples with you that are and and or inequalities. So the very first example says solve and graph 2x minus 1 less than or equal to 3 and x greater than 4x minus 9. So first thing we want to do is move over the numbers on one equation. and subtract the exponents on the other. Okay, 
And over here on the left, when you get negative x less than or equal to 1, you divide by negative 1, and you get x less than or equal to negative 1. Sorry, greater than or equal because we divided by a negative one. I wouldn't go back on my screen. I was going to erase that one, so I'll do it. And then over here, divide by negative three, and you get x, change the direction of your inequality, less than three. This is an and problem, which means their solution set should overlap. It means that I could write my inequality as one statement and it looks true. So x is greater than or equal to negative 1 and x is less than 3 makes sense. The number has to be smaller than 3, bigger than negative 1. Both are closed circles. Sorry, the left is a closed circle. The right is open. And you shade between them. So what that means is we get infinitely close to three, but it never actually gets to three. However, it does get to negative one. In example two, subtract x from both sides. You get x greater than six. Add seven to both sides. You get x less than nine. So we get that our x value has to live between those two endpoints. Both are open circles. Make sure you can tell where you shade. Make sure I can tell what numbers we're looking at. So you can clearly tell it goes like 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we know we're plotting 6 and 9. Okay. Down at the bottom. We have the quantity of 3x plus 9 less than or negative 3. So what we're going to do is subtract 9. We get 3x less than negative 12. Divide by 3. And you get x is less than negative 4. This is given to you as an or. And then you get x is greater than negative 2. So they don't overlap because of the or. So you have 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Open circle at x. It's greater than negative 2, so we shade to the right. Open circle at negative 4, it's less than, so we shade to the left. OK. 
Okay, number four, add one. So you get x less than four. Subtract three. X is greater than five. So once again, we have less than four, greater than five. Both are open circles. Greater than five, shade right. Less than four, shade left. So basically, this is every number in the universe except for the numbers between four and five. Okay, on the back, we have five, six, seven. We're going to look at these special cases. Might be on your front. It was on my next slide. Sorry. So again, what we want to do is determine, is this an and or an or? And problems are the joining of solutions. They're the only inequalities that can be written as a single inequality. So this is an and inequality, which means we're looking for an overlap. When you have a problem like five, whatever I do to the middle to get rid of it, I have to do to both outside terms. So in this case, we're gonna first get rid of that four. So I'm gonna subtract four from the middle, the right, and the left. So I get negative 12 less than 2x less than 8. Divide everything by 2. And you get negative 6 less than x less than 4. So what that means is that x lives between negative 6 and 4. Open circles, shade between. Now way back up here at the beginning, if you don't like to keep it as one problem, this technically looks like negative eight less than two X plus four and two X plus four less than 12. So you could split the problem and solve it like two inequalities if solving it as one is harder for you. Okay, number six, add seven. Divide by negative three, so you flip your sign. So I get x is less than or equal to 15, or x is less than negative 3. But what do I know about negative 3 and 15? Negative 3 is smaller. So if x is less than negative 3, and we already know that this is an or statement, so it means that it's the combination of the two. If I have 15 on my number line, and I put my closed circle and shade left, it's gonna take in or take into account those negative threes and everything they shade to the left of. So I only need one answer. This one's kind of pointless. So we only care about that because this is included in the other one. Okay, homework is the next two pages in that packet. That is all.